It's May 15th, 2022, back when my content used to look like this. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest. However, I had started a project which would change the course of my Roblox career forever. That project is my working arcade on Roblox, Starcade. But it wasn't always called that. <laughs> Welcome to Free Model Arcade! Yes, that is what I actually called it. In this video, I'm going to break down all of the major versions of my game and where we are now. In fact, by the end, I'll even show a little something that's not released yet, so stay tuned for that. But before we get into things, I'd like to explain some background. When I say working arcade, I don't mean just a bunch of minigames. I mean actual working arcade machines where you can earn tickets and spend them on prizes. As these versions go on, the games get better, and my coding skills improve exponentially. So let's get started with what I like to call version 0, Free Model Arcade. Complete with fluid physics, incredible optimizations, and the greatest gameplay you'll ever see. Let's play Zero Truth's Three Lies. Yeah, this is, like, very, very bad. The only thing that made this unique from the other slop games that were put out there was the prize shop in the top left, and even that was free modeled. At the time, I had literally zero coding experience. However, I did want to make some machines of my own. Which lead us into Starcade version 1, featuring my first ever machines. This version wasn't much different from Free Model Arcade, other than a lot of games were removed because I found out that the game ran like crap. Now featuring amazing machines such as... Yeah, the game still sucked. Everybody had to get their start somewhere, though, which lead us into Starcade V2. This time, the building didn't look like a hot mess. I tried having this big centerpiece game in the arcade, and so I just took my friend's free model machine and modified it a bit, and, uh... Yeah, it takes a bit of a while to pay out. It also had a free model dance floor that I modified for some reason. It has, like, a feature where you can change the color of it that I remember adding for some reason. Oh yeah, and remember that one game I mentioned earlier? Yeah, this is it now. There was also Guide the Ball Flip, where you could press a button to reverse gravity, except it was kinda scuffed. The prize shop was also removed, except we'd be getting a replacement for it soon. Welcome to version 3, the first version I ever bothered to advertise. <laughs> Introducing the walk speed wheel. You pay a few thousand tickets and you get extra walk speed. It's that simple. If you manage to land 10 stars, you also get 10 walk speed too. What a steal! Some notable new additions was this Plinko style game, which is a modification of my friend's game made by a modification of my friend. Now, how did it work exactly? I wish I could tell you. Trio Spin is one of my most iconic machine modifications, which is actually still in use today. The first wheel were your base tickets, the second wheel multiplied your winnings, and the third wheel minus your tickets. If you got over 200 tickets, you could even spin the top wheel for over 20 times your tickets. Line Please was a reskinned light stopper themed after an emoji that I saw. Jump Dome Omega, free model jump and jackpot game, now with a screen. No clever jump cut for this one, welcome to Starcade V4. This version kickstarted what Starcade becomes today, even keeping some of the names for the areas up until the current version. 
This one let you change your walk speed. Just don't set it to infinite or not a number though or else. Grand Stars version 1 was my first attempt at making a coin pusher. It went about as well as you expect. For some reason, the coins just wouldn't push with the setup I had, so I had to make them constantly shake in order to update the collision for them, which at that point it just looked incredibly weird. Different developers mainly comprised of games made not by me. And while Chance Land does look a bit barren right now, it used to be a lot better, but the policy update happened, and at the time I had to remove all the stuff from it. In the later versions, it just looked like this abomination right here with like 50 jackpots or something. Instead of having GUIs to buy credits, you now walk up to the credit terminal to buy them. This will definitely help with monetization- oh wait, there is none. V4 was kind of an innovative concept for me, and I'm glad I started it, because then it would lay the groundwork for... Yeah, this intro wasn't the greatest, but still. I aimed for a more city aesthetic in version 5 with a bunch of different buildings, kind of reiterating on the concept of version 4. It kept the walk speed setter and such, but now it had actual GUIs! Amazing! Now, there was one massive feature I added in this version, and that's the Interpot. Every game you played, you had a 1 in 100 chance of activating it, or you could just trigger it directly with coins, which were a different currency. In this special Interpot chance, a wheel spins at the top of the screen, and if you get all of them, you win over 3,000 tickets. This was hell to initially code, because I had no idea how remote events worked, so I had to do all of it through values, and it was hard as hell to code. But, in the end, I still managed to do it. The main arcade's design was vastly expanded from last version. Notable releases included Dance Hands, a game where you needed to click text buttons across the screen. However, since they were text buttons and not server-based in that you couldn't check who the player was, you know, you could just go ahead and, uh... I didn't really think much of it at the time due to the fact that there were no players. As a joke, I included the decal games such as Wawa Cat the Game oh, the misery. and its sister machine, Jinx the Game. Yeah, I made a lot of these. Different developers got a lot more games this version, including an elevator for some reason. Besides that though, it was really just more Starcade V4. There was an interesting feature though. You see, I had wanted to make machines for Plates of Fate Remastered, so I had completely recreated the style of the machines from there and made my own. And when they got rejected, I just added them into this game. They lasted for V5 and V5 only. Yay. Tap War is one of the worst machines I've ever created, despite me taking days to code it. You press two buttons back and forth over and over and then either heal yourself or attack an opponent. But the gameplay scripts weren't synced, so you could just have the ending sequence play multiple times on other machines. That's enough of V5. Time for version 6. Yeah, that tagline definitely held up well. Version 6 was the most unique, being a literal space station. Now, this version actually added levels to the game. Yes, actual levels. You could use them to play machines, access new zones, etc. A lot of other bad arcade games didn't have this level feature, only the big ones had them, which is exactly why I added them. There's nothing really that big to remark about the main arcade area, nor Chance Land. I mean, I added a bunch of games, but I mean, that's a given at this point, right? The lounges were level exclusive areas where you could play reskin games with higher payouts, which is what everyone wants. This totally didn't inflate the ticket economy. 
Oh yeah, by the way, this was Fortune Ticket Mania 3, a free model game I found, which is probably the laggiest thing ever made and makes the entire game slow down. It has a lot of features and is really well designed, but like, it's just way too bulky, man. Now, there was also a prestige feature where you could give up all of your levels for a bunch of prestige credits along with a ticket boost. Of course, this even more reinforced the problem of ticket inflation. Especially considering how high paying the prestige games were. Like, seriously, if you had a lot of prestige credits, these games were way too overpowered. This version also saw the return of the prize shop, although quite basic, bland, whatever. Version 7 aimed to be one big building, or really multiple, filled with games all interconnected. By the way, this guy's name is Tony, keep him in mind for later. This version switched to a completely GUI based shop, not that it mattered too much, just still pretty cool. They also had a party room that lasted for version 7 only, you could change the dance floor, fog, uh, light colors, and messages and stuff, except it wasn't really bought, like, at all. The big new game made by Popper22 and now them and Kobo7650 is Let's Fight Up. This contributor game is the greatest arcade machine to exist. I'm not exaggerating here, it's not even close. What you're looking at now is a heavily outdated version of the game. And yeah, it is extremely laggy because version 7 didn't really run well, but I'll show you an updated version of it soon. The only thing you should know right now, however, is that it's a fighting game with only one button. There's not really much else to say about version 7, it, it just had its own charm, you know? However, it didn't run well, which leads us into... Starcade version 8, or as I like to call Starcade Land, is the start of what I like to call modern Starcade. It contains a GUI style that's still used today, and is probably pretty well performing. Instead of the sections being readily available to you, you now go through portals to access them, just like Nintendo Land. The arcade right now looks a bit barren due to uh, a bunch of updates, removing a bunch of stuff, but used to be a lot better, I'll give you that much. The Interpot system also got revamped, now there are four different Interpots, each for credits and tickets. There's now a Retro Zone with old machines in it that I didn't really like that much anymore. Now we have our four main areas, Arcade, Different Developers, Chance Land, and Retro. It also had a custom card reader. It showed you the amount of credits you need to play it, the game name, and its level requirement, along with the amount of plays you get from it. While this version isn't the most up-to-date version of Let's Fight Up, it's a lot more polished than the other one. Chance Land at this point's looking more like a graveyard due to the amount of games I had to remove due to, to the policy updates at the time. Just imagine like a bunch of slot machines here. While I found Starcade Land to be good at the time, I just couldn't expand it any further, I had plans for a hotel and everything, except the map design wouldn't really allow it. Which then led me into... <music> this is the most up-to-date version that's available to the public right now. And look! Tony got a redesign! That's better, he's not bald now! There's now a super cube system where you can pay a bunch of tickets to earn a permanent ticket boost, similar to what Cornerstone Arcade has. There are new characters too, introducing Amelia, the crate shopkeeper, along with Camely, who helps out a lot. The game increased monetization by a lot, now including a full-on rewards card with a bunch of new bonuses if you paid a bunch of Robux. A workplace was also added where you could earn credits for free. 
there used to be a system where you could compete in one of two teams and play games to earn stuff for your team. However, that was discontinued in this version due to development of the next one. The arcade is definitely a lot more lively than before, now having three different floors to explore. One of my most polished machines at the time was Star Frenzy, a game based on Emoji Frenzy where you have to time a button press to line up a button with the GUIs. It also had an updated card reader with refreshed designs for it. It had reward zones and everything. Different developers is a bit empty how, because one of our developers left, but still though, it, it was pretty cool. Also, Let's Fight a had its own save data system now, which was actually really cool. Crates for different cosmetics and super cubes were now added. You can now change your title and icon for the game. It plays this little animation too, which is updated in the newest one that's coming soon. Not to mention that there were now adventures to explore. What's in them? You gotta play to find out. Now, while developing this game, a little change to the terms of service happened. Except we're prohibited by local law or regulation, we allow the portrayal of gambling and experiences. However, no real money robux or inexperienced items of value, blah blah blah. For me, it meant you can have all the gambling you want in your game as long as you can't pay robux for it. Which is exactly what I did. I made two new currencies, each you cannot buy with robux. Don't ask me why the game runs so slow here, we're working on it in the new version, okay? This game is what I considered at the time to be my magnum opus. Every version since land, I told myself there wouldn't be another one, that this was it. Except, I just kept getting unsatisfied. Every few months, I just felt the need to make another version. And, well, that's exactly what I'm doing now. Or, rather, what we're doing. You see, all of the Starcade versions up to this point had been solo projects besides the different developers games. All of the maps I had done entirely by myself. However, with this next version, I hired a team. Introducing World, Juni, and Kobo, my friends and developers of Starcade Ultimate. This will be the 10th and final revamp of Starcade. We are aiming for this project to be as good as possible. A beacon that you can charge for a ticket boost, loads of new awesome decorations, even some old games made by other developers that were lost to the saints of time now restored. We are aiming for this to be the ultimate arcade experience on Roblox featuring tons of adventures, things to do. I don't want to spoil too much about this project just yet, but if you want updates, then you should subscribe to our alternative YouTube channel and join our Discord server linked in the description. And that is the history of my game. What started out as a silly little side project of mine turned out to be something much greater. It only took around two years for it to happen. With that being said, thank you all for watching this short little history video. I had a fun time recapping everything. Even though the video was a bit different than normal, I still hope you all enjoyed it regardless. Now with that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.